So if you've been a pre-med for a while, you might have found that having a good group of pre-med friends has been really helpful. You're kind of able to talk to people, get their ideas. They all know what you're going through, especially if you don't have anybody in your family or any other friends who are doctors and know it, or even if, say, your parents are doctors, but they took the old MCAT and don't know kind of the stress of this new one. You'll find that it's really helpful to have this pre-med group. But one of the things that can kind of happen, especially around MCAT time is where it starts a lot of times, is people start to compare themselves or tell you how they got this score or that score or didn't do this or how horrible it is. And it kind of makes the MCAT into like this really big monster. So what we want to talk to you about today about is kind of some strategies for you to overcome this pre-med comparison. And I think for me, kind of the biggest illustration that this pre-med comparison thing was a problem was when I was studying my last semester of college for the MCAT and I was also taking my senior capstone course and there were three other people at my table and two of the people had gotten really low scores and were going to retake it but they had done like all the typical pre-med things like research, they were EMTs, they had great applications, graduating top of the class and then their MCAT was really bad and they were like oh it's horrible, it was awful, you know it's really hard to do well on this test. In contrast, the other person at the table actually had scored like a 520 and during that last semester, she was going to like her second looks, she had gotten into all her top schools, our state schools, like very competitive. And so I was sitting there trying to stay focused on my MCAT and wondering like, how am I going to get just a normal score? I don't need a 520 and I really try not to get in the 490s, like I just need a solid 508 to 510. How can I achieve that? And so when you think of that situation, that's what happens a lot, is you either hear the really, really positive success stories or the really, really negative ones. So that's what these six tips are going to really kind of help you combat and figure out how to stop those comparisons. So one of the very first things in this first tip here that you want to keep in mind is generally speaking, just don't bring the MCAT up unless you're talking to like really good friends or significant other family members, people who are very supportive, they don't really count. But everybody else, don't even tell people you're taking the MCAT. That was honestly one of the best decisions I made was only a couple really good friends knew I was taking the MCAT and nobody at school knew. So people weren't coming up to me and asking how it was going. I didn't really tell a lot of people outside of school that I knew either either so that I didn't know how to go like did you do okay even on your test day when people know your test day oh my god how was it how'd you do how'd you do sometimes it's just better to kind of keep these things quiet and just go about your business and don't mention it that'll really help you kind of not compare yourself when people aren't trying to show off what they're doing and a second aspect of this is don't criticize yourself. You're gonna hear a lot of different information coming from people about how they studied eight hours a day or they you know, got a 520 on their first practice test. And you know, you don't wanna get stressed by this. Like I said, the people in my personal example, they were all really smart. They had good grades. They had you know, a bunch of other stuff going for them. But had I got discouraged because they did bad on the MCAT, I possibly could have done worse on the MCAT. Instead, I kind of didn't compare myself, didn't criticize myself, didn't say, oh, I didn't do as much as them, and just kind of kept my head down and focused on my MCAT. And that's one of the best things you can do for yourself is when you're criticizing, you're just cutting yourself down and it's just hard for you to kind of overcome that. So focus on the positive aspects and focus on your personal journey because everybody's is a little different. And another thing that happens when you're criticizing yourself, and this is our third tip, is you're spending time doing it. So every time you criticize yourself or you compare yourself or you think about somebody else's MCAT, that's a minute or two that you could have been doing another practice question, reading some content, reviewing information. And if you add all of that up over the course of studying for your MCAT, you might even realize you spend so much time comparing yourself, you could have taken a whole practice test. And so those are the things that are going to really help boost your score, not comparing yourself. So think of it as a time management thing too. Anytime you're comparing yourself, you're not studying and your goal for the MCAT is to maximize your study time and get as much out of it as you can so that you can be successful. So our fourth tip is kind of based on this saying you may have heard before and it's what's a doctor who only gets C's and the answer is they're still a doctor and so a lot of things and this is gonna you'll find that this isn't just a pre-med thing like when you get to med school you're gonna be surrounded by all the top pre-meds who made it into med school and so it's just gonna kind of get worse to be honest so it's really important that you master this now 
And so one of the things with this kind of idea is that different people need different scores for their goals. You might, some people get in with a 502 and a 504, and some people end up needing like a 522. It really just depends kind of on what you're doing and what your goals are. So don't kind of start comparing yourself to other people when your journey and your path are different and you kind of don't know all the extras that went into it. And the next tip kind of follows this up and is on a similar uh, kind of wavelength, I guess, tip number five is focus on what your goals are and be really realistic about what your goals are. Um, this can really help you. For instance, if you know your dream school, you need a 505 and you're like right in the average, don't get freaked out by people talking about needing a 520. Like you just need that 505, so focus on that. And on the other hand, if you know you need to go to an Ivy League school or you really wanna get into an Ivy League school and you're gonna need like a solid 522, focus on that and put your energy into figuring out how you're gonna achieve what you need instead of listening to what everybody else has to say about what they need. Because again, everybody needs a different thing and you wanna be realistic about your goals. There's a different scenario for somebody who's working full time and trying to get into their local state school than an undergrad who has the entire summer to study and wants to go to an Ivy League school. So you can't compare the two because they're totally different. And the sixth tip has to do with one of the biggest perpetrators of all of this, which is social media. And you've probably noticed if you follow like Instagram or your friends are on Instagram, people love to post like taking the MCAT or like studying or all their pretty notes. And you've probably found yourself thinking like, why am I not doing that? Why am I struggling with this? All of these things, you see people getting into med school, people who are doing something else and they may have got rejected. And so what you have to recognize is people always post their Instagram moments. Like what are their best moments? Even the posts that are like um, talking about their failures are still put in like a very nice light. And so you want to recognize that you're not, you can't compare your entire life against somebody's best moments. And that's really important when you're studying because when you see all these best moment things, you're going to be like, wait a second, I'm not doing anything. But they're not, that's not what you see. You don't see them crying because they're upset because they've been studying for so long. You don't see them having to start studying again because they need to do a retake, all of those things. And so the best way to combat this, honestly, is just stop getting on social media. And if it's a real problem for you, just go ahead and delete it off your phone. Um, for me, when I was studying for the MCAT, I actually had to delete Instagram and Facebook off my phone because I just spent so much time on it. And I realized I was comparing myself. And again, back to one of our other tips, I was wasting time. And you might even find this better for you. I actually have not re-added them back on my phone almost a year later because it didn't seem relevant to me anymore um, to constantly be on Facebook or be on Instagram. And for pre-meds in specific, there's also Reddit, which at first can be great because you're finding all this helpful information and they explain things for you. But then you'll see like these crazy stories where somebody's like taking it three times and they can't get it and they're never going to be a doctor. Somebody studied for four weeks and they got a 525 and now they're going to an Ivy League. And so all of these things kind of will add up on Reddit and it can be a great resource, but you want to be careful how involved you get in Reddit and how often you're reading it, that sort of thing. And if you're interested in like a lot of the study strategies that you'll find on Reddit, but you want more of a positive mindset and don't want to kind of get all the background information that can cause pre-med comparisons, look into our MCAT Mastery Strategy Guide because that actually has a bunch of the information from Reddit. I remember for me personally, I spent hours scouring Reddit and then getting distracted by all this other information causing comparisons. When I got the MCAT Mastery Guide, almost all of it was in there and I didn't have any of the negativity. It was only like positive, upbeat thoughts. So look into that if you need some kind of additional help and it keeps you off of Reddit, but it's still in a written format. And finally, with comparisons, one thing to keep in mind is that there is such a thing as a positive comparison. And this is when you read a story, um, maybe like an inspirational story about the MCAT, and you'll even find these on Reddit sometimes. That might be what keeps you going back. And it's these positive inspirational stories that talk about how somebody did it or they overcame a challenge with the MCAT and they were able to do it or they were working full time and they were able to get the score they needed. And these can cause a positive comparison where you look at that person and you go, hey, if they can do it, I can do it too. And so that's really nice to have. And if you're somebody who feels like you would do well with that, and it can be very helpful to like read that somebody else has done it and they've achieved it because that's one of the biggest hangups is like, 
well, everybody I know didn't do well and they're having to retake. But if you want some of these positive success stories, you should look into our MCAT Mastery Strategy course online. It's free. And our blog posts also have some of these inspirational stories. And I'm actually going to put a link for some success stories down at the bottom. And you'll also see a link for that free strategy course where you can get more information and see more of these positive success stories if you're interested. And so kind of remember at the end of all of this with the MCAT, that no matter what you do, you're on your own journey and it's your own path. And all of these things are what make you unique and are going to kind of make you a great medical school applicant. So really focus on focusing on yourself and what you do well and what you can achieve. And don't look at the outside things. And when you want to compare or see a success story, look for positive, inspirational ones that talk about how they can do it. Because with the MCAT, it's all about reframing your mind to the positive and that you can achieve it, that you can do it, and that you will get to go to medical school and be a great doctor. And that's what I want you to really focus on and take away from this video is that when you stop comparing and instead spend your time focusing on your goal and achieving your goal, and changing your mindset to I can do it, you will be very successful on the MCAT.